Great news, cartoon and football fans. My new book, Fashion Girl 3.0, is now on sale. Available on Amazon, iTunes, Barnes & Noble's website, and other sites where books are sold. It's available in paperback, hardcover, and digital forms. At the end of this video, I'll provide a brief description of this new book. The story you're about to see is a big, fat lie. No names have been changed to protect anybody. Now in its 44th year in operation, combining cartoons and football together since 1981, this is America's first and foremost fantasy football league. We are the USCFL. The United States Cartoon Football League. Greetings, cartoon and football fans, and anyone who might still be interested in this show. This is Robbie Graham of the USCFL Network, welcoming you to our continuing series of episode runoffs 
as we shamelessly rate and review Season 2 of Velma. If you're joining us for the first time, may we extend to you a cordial welcome, and we hope you'll enjoy everything this channel has to offer. Well, almost everything. We invite you to take a moment to subscribe to this channel and join our team. Normally, we strive to be one of YouTube's least offensive channels by providing a different spin about your favorite cartoon characters from the past and present that, except for this show, doesn't reflect upon their true legacies. If your favorite character or characters aren't mentioned in our videos, please leave a comment and we will answer your questions. Also be sure to ring the bell to alert you of when we put up any new videos. The USCFL is on Patreon and you can help support us for as low as three US dollars a month to as much as five US dollars a month, which averages out to 10 to 17 cents a day. In time, we can offer merchandise and other perks to help show your love for America's oldest fantasy football league. Season two so far is on par with how season one did at this stage of the game, which isn't saying much. But let's see how well or poorly episodes seven and eight fare. After six episodes, Velma has a score of 11 points out of a possible 60 points at a percentage rate of 13.8% based on the maximum score of 80 points. In one minute, Bob Wilson will rate and review episodes 7 and 8. Let's see if he's kind to dumb animals this week. This is Bob Mozart from the USCFL channel, welcoming you to this series of reviews of the new season of the Velma animated program on Mars Streaming Network. I am going to try to rate the season two on its own without comparing it to the previous iterations of Scooby-Doo. Episode seven, Female Utopia. Since the serial killer has identified herself as a woman, the fallout causes Daphne's parents, Linda and Donna, to lose the election for sheriff. For his first act, Merle banishes all the women in Crystal, Crystal Cove to the, to the mines. Um, Velma finds herself in between the bickering of her mother, Dia, and her father's partner, Sophie. Daphne is still trapped in the brain jar, which has been abducted by the intelligent cockroaches. There's a short circuit in the jar, and Daphne finds herself on a mind walk to discover her inner being with her birth parents, Di Darren and Carol, acting as her spiritual guides. Daphne reveals that she had kissed Amanda following her fight with Velma. The two of them did something bad about Velma, but it's not revealed what. Daphne realizes that she needs to make a confession to Velma to clear her conscience. Norval recognizes that his hallucinations are linked to the times that he was in the presence of Fred. He decides to tell Fred that Norval's grandmother, Dr. Edna Perdue, is still alive and could not have possessed Fred's mother, Victoria. Fred will not accept Norval's statement, so Norval challenges him to a chili cook-off. Norval puts sleeping pills in his chili pot and then takes the drug Fred to the asylum so he can meet Edna Pardue and see for himself that she is not dead. 
Fred, however, panics and runs away once he sees Edna. Normal hallucinations do appear to be to partially subside. Dia and Sophie start to get along with each other. Amanda pretends to be the serial killer by using a baby's vocal synthesizer, and Velma realizes that the killer could have been be a man using such a device to mask his gender. Velma convinces the women to provide her with any information that they have about the murder victims. Velma finds out that all of the victims were connected with Project Scooby in one form or another. Amon was acting as a legal consultant with the men about some issue on the project. The cockroaches return Daphne's brain jar to the asylum, and she is reunited with her body. She does not immediately tell Velma what it was that she and Amanda did. This episode saw a small advances in solving the mystery. Velma realized that the killer did not have to be a woman and that all of the victims were connected to Project Scooby. Dia and Sophie buried the hatchet, but not much else happened. Daphne realized that she needs to reconcile with Velma. I give this episode two. Episode eight, Amon Hunt. Donna and Linda start to interrogate Amon about his connection to Project Scooby. However, Don from the base arrives and takes Amon into military custody due to Project Scooby being a classified operation. And Amon is placed under house arrest. Amon and Sophie admit that they saw Daphne cheating on Velma with Amber. Velma consults with the popular girls who advise her to get her adventure at revenge by publicly embarrassing Daphne on the upcoming school bus trip to Sacramento. Velma's not sure she wants to go through with the plan to embarrass Daphne. She treats Daphne nicely and even gives her a gift of some lotions. Daphne is very pleased with the gift and tells Amber that they must come clear to, clean to uh, Velma about what they did. Novel wants to use the trip to make out with, Vol- with Lola despite her being in a jar. However, Fred keeps interrupting him as he tries to move on from his false beliefs about his mother. Amon has escaped from his home detention and is hiding in the bus bathroom. He calls Velma inside and gives her a thumb drive of Project Scooby uh, documents and asks her to print it out when she gets to the state capitol. To keep Amon from being discovered, Velma is forced to announce that she left the toilet in a bad condition and nobody should attempt to use it. The students start to gossip about what Velma might have done to the toilet. The students arrive at the Capitol and tour the museum. Amber wants to go ghost hunting with Fred, but he wants to bond with Norval and plan their trip to the amusement park. However, he learns that the amusement park trip was canceled due to budget cuts. He and Norval protest this. The other students at first do not want to protest because they wanted to use the extra time to make out. They then realize that if the budget cuts continue, that the course overnight trip might also be canceled, and that is even more of a make-out festival. Daphne and Velma reconcile, and Daphne confesses that she did not actually do anything. What she did do was have Amber place a curse on Velma that she will be alone. Velma tells Daphne that she is not mad about that and even finds it kind of romantic. Amon tells Velma and Daphne that all the victims were part of Project Scoopy. He was brought in because they were being abused by somebody connected to the project. The clues were that the abuser didn't like the 4th of July he, the, accuser, the abuser is an electronics wizard and likes to wear white sneakers. The students find themselves surrounded by armed men. However, it is not the state police protecting the capital. It is Don and the military come, come to take Amon back into custody. Amon hijacks the bus and flees with Velma, Daphne, Norval, and Lola. However, he is unable to escape and pulls over. Don reveals that after Edna Perdue left the project, its objectives were changed, and instead of co-opting the bodies of meddling kids, the project wanted to create a super soldier to conduct espionage missions. The The person known as Uncle Scooby created the super soldier 
which then went rogue and became uncontrollable. It was the super soldier who was abusing the members of Project Sco Scooby and who uh, caused them to reach out to Amon. The bus trip then resumes and re Velma realizes that the super soldier is the talking dog. At this point, the bus is at over attacked and overturned and Velma is captured. This, saw, this episode saw much of the mystery solved. Velma and Daphne reconcile. I give the episode a three. This is Bob Mozart from the USCFL Network returning you to the wrap-up by our host and moderator, Robbie. Thank you and have a good week. Welcome back. Just as I said earlier, this show is on par with how season one was last year. After eight episodes, Velma 2 has a score of 16 points out of a possible 64 points, please pardon my mistake, and a percentage rate of 20% based on the maximum score of 80 points. Again, my apologies for the miscalculation. Next week, we will review the final two episodes. Will they do better than the season one final episodes, or will it be even? Find out next week. And until then, this is Robbie Graham of the USCFL Network wishing you peace. Take care and stay safe. The fourth book in the Fashion Girl series is now for sale. Unlike the first three books, this is a one-story, full-fledged novel. Read about and meet Daphne Sandra Bates, daughter and granddaughter of the previous Fashion Girls, becomes the third woman to be called Fashion Girl. Follow Miss Bates as she learns what it takes to be a superheroine, her trials and tribulations her presentation to the world. Her first mission and a final battle with her mother makes this a must-read coming-of-age story. The torch is passed on to the next generation of style chicks. In paperback, it sells for $20.99 US dollars. In hardcover, it sells for $43.99 US dollars because of the extra material used and $7.99 US dollars in digital format. Read all about Fashion Girl 3.0. Fashion Girl is an intellectual property of the United States Cartoon Football League.